Hello everyone, today I'd like to introduce you to a touching and heartfelt romantic Japanese drama, Indigo Mood. The story begins and ends at the funeral. Aiden, a literary genius, was widely noted for his brilliant novels at a young age. He even managed to get published while reading. Today, however, he is in a creative slump and immersed in a life of hardship. One day, he attends the funeral of a college professor and meets up with Colt, a college friend. Unfortunately, Aiden didn't recognize him and made a hasty exit. His classmates have been talking about the changes in him. Rumor has it that not only has he suffered a failure in his investments, but he hasn't released a new work in a long time. It all brings back memories of Colt's student days, when he harbored dreams of becoming a writer. The young and famous Aiden had been his target. Now that their lives have crossed paths, the two are destined to unveil a new chapter in his love story. The world's praise for him makes Colt rather disdainful. After reading Aiden's work, however, he was overwhelmed by the world of Aiden's books, doubting his past creations. Colt resolutely deleted his book manuscript. After the funeral, Colt drives home, and on his way he once again encounters Aiden, who had excused himself early. From that moment on, Colt gradually steps into Aiden's world. After deleting his book manuscript, Colt loses his confidence in becoming a writer and can't find a more decent job. He can only work for a publishing house as an editor of erotic novels. He was disliked by his living girlfriend for this and was kicked out of his home, leaving him with a temporary place to live in the company. The two begin to chat as the car pulls up to Aiden's house. Out of gratitude, Aiden invites Colt to stay at his home for the night. He even said that if he was willing to pay the rent, he would consider a long-term stay. The offer was attractive to Colt because the location was close to his business. So Colt readily agreed and gleefully went to take a shower. However, to my surprise, there was a scream. Turns out, the water heater in the house was broken, lacking funds for repairs. Aiden has been bathing in cold water. Aiden also passes on the secret of giving Colt a cold shower in order to solve the problem. <laughs> After taking a shower, Colt finds Aiden fretting over a stack of bills. Curious, he inquired as to what had happened in the intervening years. Colt understood the original story and suggested he come to his publishing house. But Aiden doesn't think official fiction counts as literature at all. Tools that have a use and purpose are just boring pastimes. That's true though. Colt, however, hits the nail on the head when he tells him to face this, though not at face value, but you always need money for years and years of bills, right? And he's a fan of Aiden's books and doesn't want him to be silenced by it. Under the pressure of firewood, the noble and proud Aiden eventually compromises, out of a sense of self-perseverance. Aiden, who is writing her first canon novel, simply can't let go. The love scenes are written in a very cryptic manner. Colt reminds him that he can't write like this to get the best out of people and tells him to keep revising. Aiden also reads a lot of books recommended to him by Colt and especially likes the books written by Joel. It made him change his mind about official fiction. When Colt arrives home from work that day, he finds Aiden drinking again. Turns out it's the anniversary of his father's death. Once he hadn't even gone to the funeral because of a gamble, he felt that the anniversary of the death was also ineligible to go. With that Aiden fell into a deep sleep under Colt's care. Colt even made sober soup for Aiden the next day and didn't forget to tell him. There are a lot of obscure writers these days, but don't die alone. Eat well, sleep well, he shouldn't stop there. Aiden watched the heat wafting off the soup, smelled the familiar flavors, and listened to the unfolding exhortations. He was touched. That's the day the boss told Colt. As soon as he gets the rights to Joel's last book, he'll move him to a very decent publisher. At this point, Joel calls with no intention of working together again. In the heat of the moment, Colt thinks of Aiden to reconsider on the pretext of worshipping the master and collecting his close disciples. Aiden was resistant, but couldn't resist Colt's agonizing pleas. Joel thought it was a female disciple, and when he saw that the visitor was a man, he was about to blow the duo out of the room. Colt is distraught. Aiden sees it and takes it upon herself to step forward and plead. Although he was a male, his brain was still smart, so as long as he was willing to take him as his disciple, he could do anything. Joel comes on and promises to show him as long as Aiden serves Colt like a woman, and he took him as his disciple. Colt is stunned to hear it and calls it excessive, while Aiden is willing, just like that in Colt's surprised expression. The moist, surging top of the Colt was ushered in. Colt and Aiden, as expected, got the desired result. <laughs> on the way back, Colt asks Aiden why she's made it this far. Aiden looks out the car window and replies because it's a job he wants to take. Instead, Colt says let's just forget about earlier. Aiden's eyes were a little moist, and disappointment piled up on his face. Colt's body, far more honest than his heart, wrapped an arm around Aiden and kissed him. After a night of passion, Colt opens his eyes to see only the house keys left on the table, and Aiden has taken up residence in Joel's home as a shut-in. 
Joel tells him that he has liver cancer, which is now terminal, and that he has six months at most. The reason he wanted to take on an apprentice was in addition to helping him organize his book and get his work out there. He was also wanting someone to talk to and get through the few moments he had left. On this day, as the master and apprentice are talking, Joel asks Aiden about his reasons for writing a sensory novel. Aiden answered honestly, not because he liked it, but simply for the money. What's even more discouraging for Aiden is that it's so hard to make up your mind to write official fiction, but he had no way to write. He couldn't write well, probably didn't have the talent for it. Joel dismissed his claim and led him to the Lustfield room. He told him that these props don't have to be practiced one by one though, but at least have the desire so that it resonates with the reader. And just like that Aiden began to detach from his body's desires. Colt, on the other hand, is on the verge of switching to a decent job because of Aiden's efforts. He got back together with his girlfriend and rolled into bed. That night, Joel invites Colt over for a drink to celebrate Aiden's worship under her own tutelage and the completion of her first book. Colt can't help but feel a little jealous as he watches Aiden and Joel talk to each other. Joel also has a pen name for him, Daryl. Possibly because of the excitement, Joel falls down and Aiden sends him back to his room to rest. Colt pulls Aiden, who is coming out of her room, to an empty room and begins to tangle. He says, while jealous, that Aiden and Joel are too good for each other. He thought about the future. He envisioned with his composite girlfriend, while his two bodies entwined erotically again, only before he had a chance to think much about it. The nanny shriek yanked him back to reality. Joel vomited blood and collapsed on his bed, and was taken to the hospital for resuscitation. As a disciple, Aiden took on the burden of caring for his teacher. He spends his days traveling between his home and the hospital. Joel looks at Aiden, who has been working so hard for himself, and tells him with great pain. He was just his own disciple. There was no need to work so hard. Aiden, however, says there is a selfishness in doing this, and that his father died of the disease, but he himself missed the time of his father's life because he was sulking. He's doing this now as a sort of atonement. Joel was both heartbroken and touched to hear it and kept saying thank you. On this day, Aiden goes to the publisher to discuss the details of the book with Colt. Aiden, however, overhears him getting back together with his girlfriend. News of Colt's immediate transfer to another publisher. Aiden is furious at the thought that she is nothing more than a tool being used by Colt. Colt listened to Aiden's poking comment. Annoyed, he pressed the man against the wall and broke down in his own defense. No one can be as dismissive of society and the future as he is. You can be as capricious as you want to be and live without having to look at anyone else's face. He also wanted to follow in Aiden's footsteps and leave as passionately as he did. But then he ended up being something he hated as well. And that's how Colt got kicked out of Aiden's house. Spring is supposed to be the season of renewal. But Joel's condition has not improved. He spent most of the day passed out. That day he called Colt to his side and instructed to take good care of Aiden for him. But he shook his head. Still relieved, having no regrets, he cries and blames Colt. It's his fault for bringing Aiden to him. In the end he realized there was a bunch of things he had done. He could no longer teach him to write, no longer open his sorrows. Colt was blown away by the fact that they were like father and son. Back at the office, Colt refuses the transfer and wants to stay on and continue to watch over Aiden. Aiden had been afraid to sleep while Joel was dying. He's afraid he won't see Joel one last time once he closes his eyes, but he had been going for days on end that it just couldn't hold out any longer. And luckily Colt showed up. A sleepy Aiden and Colt sit together in front of the Paulsantian window. Colt apologizes to Aiden, who understands how difficult it is and thanks him for coming. Otherwise, he won't be able to hold out anytime soon. Colt swept Aiden over and leaned against his shoulder. Aiden reminisces about his past with Joel. Eventually, Joel passed away quietly and his slumber act on. Aiden single-handedly organized the funeral as a disciple, wanting to do his filial duty. Many of the guests are secretly mocking him for Joel's legacy, but no one knew that his house and land had been repossessed because of the loan. The rights to the previous novels were also left to his ex-wife. All that's left for Aiden is the rights to this posthumous work. Even with this posthumous work, Joel is only mostly finished because of his condition. Joel was unable to continue, and Aiden wrote the rest of it for him. He gave Colt the manuscript of his posthumous work. He told him to take this posthumous work with him and go wherever he wanted. Colt tells Aiden about his decision not to go. And so the marriage goes sour. He'll just have to stay on as Aiden's editor for now. Aiden followed up by asking if this was an edit. The two were entwined again, in front of Joel's effigy. And maybe that's what he wanted to see. Joel's posthumous novel was published, and it was as critically acclaimed as expected. Even Aiden has come to a creative peak. But Colt started avoiding Aiden. Their relationship became delicate. Colt had promised Joel that he'd take good care of Aiden, but he could never give him what he expected. That hot love, he couldn't come into his life and only teach him how to love vividly, 
how to be harsh with your desires before they fade away like the tide. Eventually, Colt married a girl. He met in a sorority and lived a quiet life, though this woman wouldn't look down on his work, though this woman loved him, although they have a lovely daughter, but there's still a fire somewhere in Colt's heart. That didn't burn out with Aiden. It may not be extinguished in a lifetime, and their love has been dusted off in a long line of memories. The story ends here. Aiden's success as a student has allowed him to avoid the mundane rights and wrongs of the world. He remained his simple self, and Colt seems to be the way most of us should be. His heart yearns for Aiden's spontaneity, but he doesn't have that kind of talent, and not as innocent as Aiden. From the moment Colt met Aiden, doomed to their iffy attraction, urges and desires, after the passion burns out, only ashes are left to die with the wind. Joel certainly planted the seeds of ambiguity in both men's minds. It is a pity that they, who once warmed each other in the darkness, could not come out into the sunlight in the end. Even this lifelong redemption pales in comparison. They explore the loneliness of genius and the despondency of the common man and this interweaving of encountered ideas, and the complexity of love and the paradox of turning in life. Aiden's melancholy is that blue. Colt's reality is that purple. Their story is indigo. How moving it was when Joel tearfully pleaded with Colt to take good care of Aiden. Aiden's simplicity, Aiden's single-minded purity kept him bound. This reassured Joel on his deathbed, but Colt fails to live up to this mandate after all. But fear not, his different life, Colt couldn't and Jerome crashed in. In the next installment, we come to Aiden and Jerome's story. That's the end of today's story. If you like it, be sure to support it and leave your feelings in the comments section. We'll see you in the next issue.